Hi, I'm Dan Nelson. Welcome to Calligraphy Corner. I hope you're excited about making some beautiful letters. This video is going to be about chancery cursive, which is, is really the most traditional uh, form of calligraphy. It's what a lot of people think is calligraphy, even though there's so many different kinds. You're going to learn which tools to use, what materials, how to set up your, your workspace, and you're going to learn about each individual letter the shape, the inclination, how to, how to draw them, of course, how to connect them, sometimes how to add some special flourishes. So I can't wait to get going. Let's get started now. So let me start by talking about some of the setup and materials that will help you in your calligraphy. First of all, you'll notice I've got a, a, a handy dandy piece of inexpensive plexiglass here. Now there's a reason I'm using plexiglass and a piece of 4x4 lumber. The reason is I want calligraphy to be something that you can do easily and quickly, that you don't have to uh, uh, set up a whole uh, uh, you know, office in your house to get going. Otherwise, if you do that, you'll never get started. So something very simple. I, I don't even remember where I got this. It was just laying around the house. Glass would work, but plexiglass is a little bit safer and easier to carry in your car and so forth. And a brick, uh, a, a set of dumbbells, <laughs> anything will work. Because when you're doing calligraphy, you really do want this incline. It's quite difficult to do it on a flat surface. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and invest in a nice drawing table, be my guest, do that. But even then, you might want to have this in the trunk of your car so you can do it everywhere. Now, I want to talk right off the bat about the, the, the inclination, the slant of chancery cursive. This is very important. Different typefaces utilize different slants. So each one is a little bit different. I want to demonstrate, first of all, and I'm just using an ordinary pen, a lot of uh, cal calligraphy instruction books, they'll say, oh, hold your pen at 30 degrees. Now, not to rag on all the other people that teach calligraphy, but what, what 30 degrees? I mean, uh, you got a protractor. <laughs> Just doesn't make any sense to me, okay? Because I don't know what 30 degrees means. So I want to use a system, and I'm going to use the same system throughout all of my videos, of, that, will, that will make it easy, f I think, easy for us to communicate. Okay, I want you to look at this really close. I have just drawn a square, doesn't matter that if it's perfect, a square, and then I draw one line from corner to corner, another line from corner to the middle there, corner, middle there. Now, I am going to call, I'm going to label each of these angles, okay? This is going to be angle number one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm not going to use 32 degrees, 40 degrees, or any of that kind of sense, because I don't think that makes makes sense to anybody. I'm going to say angle one, two, three, four, or five. Or if I get really fussy, I'll say angle three and a half. Okay? But do you know what I mean now? Angle three means you're going to hold your pen at this angle. This is your pen. Let me, let me pick up an example here. So the flat part of your pen is parallel to that line. Does that make sense? Okay. Now let's talk about the inclination of the letters, which is another, another issue we have to deal with. There are a couple things you can do. One is you can go to the store and you can buy uh, a sheet of calligraphy paper that has the inclinations already printed out on it. Feel, my, feel free, be my guest to do that if you want. But what happens when you run out of this, I, I want to show you how to make your own. And this is something that I do at the beginning of every, every font, every letter that I get started with. If you don't have one of these nice inexpensive rulers with a bunch of lines on it, Eh, this might be, usually they're 18 inches long, this might be a piece of equipment that you'll want to invest in. Uh, again, an ordinary ruler will do, but you'll find that the, the, the ones with these uh, lines on them are quite helpful. Now, the piece of paper that I'm working on right now, this piece of paper, is not the paper that we're going to be doing our letters on. Okay? This is a guide sheet that actually goes underneath. Any horizontal line will do, and let's let's say uh, let's say we're going to use this graphic felt tip uh, calligraphy pen. There are a lot of brands out there. I happen to like this one quite a bit because it, it keeps its point for a while. One of the first things you're going to want to nail down in, with each calligraphic uh, font is how tall are the letters, and calligraphers have this really nifty way of measuring the height of letters. They do it, we do it, by how many nibs, got it? The thing on the end of this dip pen is called a nib, right? So I'm calling this a nib. How many nibs 
tall is your letter. And this is, again, very traditional. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and I think I'm going to add one more, seven. So I'm thinking that seven nibs tall is a good height for my chancery cursive. So I'm going to draw one line there, and here's why I like this ruler that's transparent. I can get it lined up just right by looking through the ruler, get the lines parallel, and draw another line there. Okay, now are those caps or are those lowercase? Good question. Let's say that that's our lowercase, our lowercase letters like X, I, V, W, M, N, and so forth. If that's the case, then our extenders, because the letter D and B and F and K have a, something that goes above the lowercase line, right? So let's say if, if our lowercase is seven nibs high, then our extender is probably, and I'm going to come back to that probably in a moment, our extender is probably three nibs high. And again, I'm going to use the same ruler. I can see the, through it, so I, it's pretty easy. You could do this by measuring it all out, you know, with a ruler. Or a T-square works very well if you have that. But then there are also those letters that go below the, the uh, main lowercase letter, like the letter G and J and Y. So we have to do the same thing for the lower. And let's say in this case, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to make our extenders that go down are the same length as the extenders that go up. Are you with me? Okay. So the first thing that you're going to want to do in your guide sheet is you're going to have a bunch of lines very much like this. A wide space in the middle, short on the top, and short on the bottom. Got it? The next thing you're going to do is make sure that you have, this is chancery italic or chancery cursive. In chancery, the letters are all slanted. And I will tell you from sad experience that one of the easiest mistakes to make in chancery is to start getting your, the degree of italicization. Italicization? <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> you, you, you'll find you'll start writing your letters like this, and then some will start leaning a little more, and some will get a little bit more upright, and it doesn't look good. So this is a really, really important aspect of getting the italicized right. And again, you could say what, I'm sure some, many books will tell you exactly how many degrees this angle is. I don't really care well, how many degrees it is. What I care about is what it looks like. Does it look like the right slant? And here, it doesn't matter how far apart these lines are. I mean, you could, you could make some much closer if you're so inclined. It doesn't really matter. What does matter is that they are parallel to one another. So once again, this little ruler helps. Again, you could do it with a, any kind of ruler or T-square, but this is one way to get started. Now, this then is my guide sheet. Now, thanks to advanced planning, I actually have a guide sheet that I've already done that's a whole page, and it's even got mistakes and messes in it, just like yours will. Now, what you're going to do then is, is put the piece of paper that you're doing lettering on on top of this. And for this reason, it's a really good idea to have some tracing paper, or let me see, this is called graphics paper, or vellum, any kind of paper that you can kind of see through. Get it? Tracing paper. Uh, will work. Um, it's just as important. Do you see that? Later on I'm going to talk about how to do more advanced uh, creative processes. You might put a light underneath here and then you can trace on opaque paper, but that'll come later. So here's, before we even get started, here's what I, I want you to see. Let's say we start just doing a lowercase alphabet like the letter A. This is all practice at this point. Don't worry if they're not perfect. B. I'm going to talk about each letter individually, but before we get there, I want to get a look, because here's what I want you to, you to discern for yourself. Once you've done a few letters, you look at those and say, hmm, I think they ought to be taller. <laughs> I think they ought to be, uh, or you might say, I think they ought to be skinnier. That is, that the, the nib is too fat. I'd like it to be lighter. And that's right now when you make your adjustments. While you're making your cheat sheet, you either 
say seven is too short or seven is too tall. Get it? So now we're getting set up. Just a minute, we're going to start talking about individual letters. Thanks for watching.